What's going on guys, it's Andrew for TheTiger.com and I think the camera flashed a bit. Anyway, this today's video is going to be a review of the Kindle Fire HD, but not just any review, it's a rooted review. So basically I'm going to be going through the gist of why you would want to root your Kindle Fire HD. Uh, this is a 7 inch Kindle Fire HD by the way, so Kindle Fire, whoop de doo and uh, basically I'm just going to be telling you like why you should root your Kindle Fire HD, what can you do once your Kindle Fire HD is rooted, and you know what benefits you get from getting it rooted. So without further ado, let's unlock the device. Uh, straight away you'll see I have the normal lock screen on. Um, if you get your Kindle Fire HD normally through a retailer, if you pay like $1.99 for it, you find that your lock screen actually has advertisements on it. Um, if your Kindle Fire HD is rooted, you can take that off. Uh, alternatively, of course, you can pay $15 to Amazon and get the ads removed that way but um i don't want to give amazon 15 bucks just to remove ads from my lock screen so one thing you can remove the ads from the uh from the lock screen of your kindle fire uh the really big big thing that you can do with your kindle fire once you once you have root is you can install the google play store so i'm not bashing the amazon uh app store i think the uh, app store for the app for um amazon's app store is actually pretty uh, extensive it definitely, ha definitely, I'm sorry, has way more applications than, say, the Barnes and Noble's Nook Store. It's insane how you know what would the difference in uh, app availability is. However, Amazon and App Store does not have every single app in the Play Store available, and some people may find that uh, rather annoying. Some people may not care. Mm -hmm. Admittedly, in the beginning, I wasn't too keen on. Um, oh, oh I, did, I really didn't care in the beginning. Um, I didn't really notice that big of a difference between what was available and what wasn't available. But um, after rooting the Kindle Fire HD and getting the Play Store installed, I, I saw like a big difference in the amount of apps that I was actually using on my Kindle Fire HD. So for example, YouTube is an application that the Kindle Fire HD does not have, um, which I find rather odd that an Android device or a device in, in general that's boasted as being uh, a media savvy device does not have a YouTube application. Now, that being said, you can go on the browser you know, using the Sync the Silk browser, I'm sorry, and um, you can access YouTube's mobile site. However, I found it really annoying that I did not have a dedicated application for it, considering that I did have that on my previous Android tablets, my iOS tablets, and even my, my Android power smartphone and my iOS power smartphone. I mean, everyone has a YouTube app. So that was one thing, YouTube. Uh, another thing is I sideloaded VLC Media Player. Um, this is a very great uh, device for viewing media and um, I thought it was kind of strange that the uh, formats, it didn't play too many formats. Um, Android usually is able to play things like um, MKV files or AVI files. Um, I found my Kindle Fire HD couldn't play those files so I had to download uh, sideload VLC Media Player. And I have to say it works wonders. Now this is only a beta and you have to get sideloaded through the um, you're going to get an APKs from somewhere like uh, XCA developers or something like that. And you can siloed VLC Media Player over and it plays your, your videos beautifully. I have a 720p rendition of House Moving Castle that actually that was beautiful playing this on my screen. I was able, even, even able, I'm sorry, to get the uh, HDMI out toward my larger television and able to view the movie that way through VLC. So that's one thing. And uh, you don't have to be rooted to get VLC. That's uh, a normal app you can sideload, but just, you know, that's something you guys should definitely get. So let's go to the Play Store. And you see this is the latest updated version of the Play Store. So it's the nice new theme that's available. Everything looks pretty nice for a tablet size. Um, you can scroll through for categories. Scroll around to top paid and top free or whatever. Um, some apps, however, aren't available to download. So for example, I want to get Instagram. Uh, there's no Instagram availability. Can't get the Instagram app. Another thing I could not get was Google Plus, and um, I really enjoy using Google Plus. It's my social network of choice, and not being able to use it was kind of disappointing. However, because this is a rooted device, you are able to sideload Google Plus and get it working. So you see Google Plus is sideloaded there. While it's not the most recently updated version of Google Plus, it's still working Google Plus, which is a lot better than using it on a browser. Um, another reason you might want to root your Kindle Fire HD, and I recommend that you probably do, is you can change your launcher. 
there is, there are several different launchers you can get from the Play Store. The way to get them to work though is you need to get an app called Kindle Free Pro. I'm not sure if this is absolutely required, but it was the easiest way for me to get a separate launcher installed on the Kindle Fire HD and to get it to actually work. The app itself is not free, it costs $1.99 in the Play Store, but in my opinion it's actually worth it. With this I was able to remove the uh, lock screen ads and I was also able to download and install uh, separate launchers. And I can use them just by you know activating them. And you can also set them as your default so when your Kindle Fire boots, so whenever you press your home button, you automatically go back to that. Um, this also has a bunch of other features where it helps you um, install like Google applications and get the frameworks and everything working. It's a little difficult getting all these to work because you need to have some sort of knowledge of using our root file browser to do this manually. So getting this this way and having it do it automatically for you is really nice. Uh, and also it's a great way to disable your uh, OTA updates because Kindle fires unfortunately get pushed um, notification pushed. Um, uh, updates from Amazon and when they're pushed they just automatically install them and there's nothing you can do to stop that unless you know you're not connected to the network um, this allows you to turn it off I'm not sure how well it works because I haven't guys um, I, there hasn't been any new updates but um, it says it's supposed to work so let's say you want to get a new home launcher you use Kindle Free Pro and you installed Nova Launcher or Go Launcher uh, let's go ahead and launch Nova Launcher and you see here there's Nova Launcher I was using it before, it runs nicely, right now I only have one home screen on, I have it set that way because it's just convenient for me. But everything is pretty smooth once everything starts getting working, like you see there's a little bit of lag there, but that's just because I wasn't using this before. But it's not bad at all and things work pretty nicely, um, you can still go back to the home uh, launcher because it becomes an app. However, when you do do this, note that you're not able to use some of the Amazon features. So, for example, let's go to Books, which is a stock generic application from the Android Home Launcher, which is basically just a Kindle viewer. I'm going to see my books are nicely placed there. I can open a book and read it. However, if I'm using another launcher like uh, Nova Launcher and I want to activate the Amazon Kindle app, it won't activate can't read my books and if you go to the Play Store and try to update this you're not going to be able to because it's already updated to its fullest uh, uh, capacity it doesn't make you update it anymore so keep that in mind if you want to use like uh, you want to reuse the book application you're going to have to go back to your home launcher um, that being said there are different home launchers you can try so that was Nova Launcher let's go ahead and whoops launch the wrong application let's go ahead and launch a Go Launcher um, See, Go Launcher looks pretty smooth there. I have a theme set up, and again, one home screen because that's just how I like to keep my tablet. And pretty smooth. My issue with the home launchers, however, is that they do work as a separate application in the background, so your whole system slows down a little bit. So I found that when I'm using the uh, another home launcher and I start running apps aggressively, my system slows down, and typing becomes pretty uh, awkward to do um, another thing you can do is you can change the search I haven't done it because I've actually grown quite fond of the Amazon search layout uh, being able to search through you know, libraries or stores in the web but um, you can actually use Google search um, Google default search uh, application you know Google now and that um, helps you out there uh, let's see if there's anything else to know. Yes, um, Hulu Plus is an application that really does not like root. If you have another a, a, a normal Android tablet and you are rooted, your Hulu Plus will not work on your device. It actually checks to see if your device is rooted and if it's modified in any way, then it doesn't work. However, I found on the Kindle Fire HD after it's been rooted, Hulu Plus still works, which is actually pretty convenient because I do love using Hulu Plus for shows that I tend to not be able to catch on time. So let's say I want to watch an episode of Supernatural. It plays just fine. Uh, everything plays smoothly. It's very fast. And there's no hiccups because I'm rooted. So that's another thing to keep in mind there. Um, your apps don't break once you're rooted. And you see here I have Google Keep, which has actually become a, a pretty great lifesaver for me. Um, I didn't realize like how... Uh, nice having a, a note-taking application well, a quick note-taking application was until I started using Google Keep on my phone and syncing it to my Kindle Fire too. So very convenient and very nice.
Um, other than that, everything else seems to run the same. I don't have Google Talk available on this, which is something I really wanted to get working because I, I really use Google Talk Messenger a lot on my phone. But um, I haven't gotten that available here. Uh, to install Google applications, you need to get the framework and you need to get like the updated apps. So it's a little difficult, but like I said before, if you're familiar using a rooted file or browser like a File Explorer or something, it's not too difficult to be able to navigate to your system full letting assist and app. So system and then app and then in there is where you start messing around with the applications and the permissions and whatnot. So that's something that you know you guys can do if you're you know advanced users or you know more comfortable to do that. Alright guys, so that's pretty much all there is to it to so a rooted Kindle Fire HD. This runs normally the same way as any other Kindle Fire HD. Only I have uh, root access, so I have access to a bit more applications. However, other than that, this Kindle Fire runs exactly the same as if it was a regular Kindle Fire HD. It's no real difference in performance. I don't get any boosts in anything. Um, my ROM, there's no ROM on this. There's like one ROM available on the XCA developer site. And uh, this isn't it. This is just the stock 2.3.1, I believe, or 2.3.0 uh, firmware Kindle Fire HD. And it's uh, it's rooted, so let's just go to device and about and yep 7.3.0 latest update I believe then there's a 7.3.1 I'm not too sure and uh, let's go to storage just quickly just to see how much uh, space I've used an app so far, which apparently isn't even much I still have seven gigabytes available free space. All right, guys. So uh, if you guys want to pick up a Kindle Fire HD yourselves, go right ahead. I highly recommend it. This is a beautiful uh, screen. It's 1280 by 760, I believe, or 1280 by 800 resolution, which is like really, really great resolution for the size of this tablet. Um, I highly recommend you get this over a Nexus 7. Um, it's definitely a better tablet than the Nexus 7. Um, in terms of sheer usability, it's really great to use. The interface is very nice and fluid, and everything here just runs the way it's supposed to. All right, guys, so this is the turn door for the techcurt.com. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.